And then Bronx jumps on top of David Zarato's chat and begins eating his face. I'm not joking here. I am not, this is not like a, uh, an exaggeration. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content in my YouTube channel here, Class in the Glass, but I'm also on Twitch where I play single player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. But now, as I said before, we got to go ahead and jump into my review for Gar Girls episode 14, Leader of the Pack Chat. We are starting out. This is season two. Season two, first episode, chat. We're touching uh, touching uh, a base of the of the pack chat, who are enemies of the Gargoyles, originally backed by one David Zantos chat. They were these basically mercenaries and assassins who eventually ended up becoming reality show stars to, to fighting the evil ninjas every Friday night. Uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Huge show, very popular chat, but they were pulling shenanigans. They're crazy came out, and they've been in prison for quite a while at this point. But, oh, here's the thing, though, chat. They might not be in prison for much longer, because we see on the outside of Riker's penitentiary chat, Riker's prison, we see this thing, this man, dressed in this robotic golden uh, dog suit. Uh, coyote, if you will, golden coyote suit, and he's scaling the building of this prison shack, crawling ever so slowly up it, and he fucking, he bashes in the goddamn, uh, uh, prison window, chap, and the bars and everything, and the guard's like, what the hell? Pulls his gun out, chap, but the fucking, the, the golden dingo says... Stop. And he just, chat, but he basically does to this guy, he, like, forces this supersonic, like, microwave, uh, like, wave at him, like, microwave beam at him, and the guy just slowly starts melting. He goes, ah! Ah! and, like, his fucking face starts melting, chat, his hands start melting, his insides are literally being cooked inside of him, chat. Imagine, imagine for a second, chat, if you, if, if your stomach and your insides and your intestines became a microwave. That is what's happening inside of this man, chat. And he fucking falls to the ground just sobbing in the mess that is his own body. And he is dead. <laughs> he is fucking dead. And he's like, well, my time is done. And then we cut to the... um. The cell, chat. We cut to the cell of a uh, jackal and wolf. And wolf, he's been fucking. He's been pumping irons all goddamn day. He's been fucking. He's doing his 200, 200th uh, uh, push up. And before he can finish, though, fucking Dingo shows up and he's like, "Hey guys, I'm here to break out." And he's fucking all Australian shit. He goes, "Dingo, how are you here?" It's like, "Don't even worry about it. Here, stand back." And he puts some plastic in the prison doors and ba boom, it blows up. We gotta get going. And it's like, holy shit, break out. And Dingo's involved too with the with the golden beam microwave uh, thing. And we then cut to the cell of uh, Fox and uh, Hyena. And Hyena, she's just literally burning fucking cockroaches and bugs with eyeglasses chat, uh, shooting them with paper clips until they were pierced and dead. It's fucked up. While Fox is just reading books, Hyena's like, why are you reading books? Reading's dumb. And she's like, I like to read, okay? Leave me the fuck alone. And all of a sudden, chat, the fucking golden microwave dingo man's there. And he goes, hello, ladies. I go, ah! And I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm here to break you out. And he puts a, puts a goddamn little uh, fucking uh, thing, a uh, little bit of plastic on there. Ba boom, it blows up. It's like, let's get out of here. But the fucking prison guard uh, uh, stop, like, tries to stop them. And, uh, um, you know, uh, but also, the golden dingo also, here are your weapons. He throws, like, the, the weird claw things to hyenas. She goes, ah, I like a man with, who knows how to play of toys. Which, by the way, chat, the theme of this episode for hyena and the golden dingo man is that she wants to fuck him. 
<laughs> like really, really bad. And she's like, I love a man with some toys. That's great. And I love it when he knows how to play with them. And at this point, he goes, nah, security guard, you're gonna, I'm going to put you inside the cell. And Hyena, she's like, she's got a bullet. She's like, nah, we can't let her live. I'll take care of her. I'll, I'll just give her something to remember us by for the next 15 seconds that she can remember. And she's about to fucking claw her throat out, chat. And Fox is like, no, don't. And she's like, she saves the guard. She's like, why are you doing this? What the hell's wrong with you? I'm just, I'm here to do my time, okay? I'm here to do my time and pay my fucking debt. You're not going to kill anyone on my watch. And he's like, oh, what the hell's wrong with you, Fox? And Dingo, and fucking the golden coyote man's like, we got to get the hell out of here. And she's like, fine, let's go. And they're all running and shit. And eventually they all stop at this one thing, like um, uh, Dingo and Wolf and uh, and Jackal, they get out of the building. They're, they're being, but they're being suppressed by gunfire from the guards. And at this point... Hyena, like yeah, there's a big old hole blown out, and Hyena uh, is like, whoa, 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 what, we, what are you gonna do now, tough stuff? She's like, oh, don't worry. Fucking picks her up, and he just fucking jumps, and she goes, ah! And he fucking lands perfectly. She goes, oh, you really know how to use those things, don't you? He goes, yes, I do. And he fucking runs out there with the rest of the guys, like, all right, what next, smart guy? He's like, oh, don't worry, ye of little fucking faith. And he just sends out microwave waves at everyone, chat, and they all, all their insides become microwaves, and they die horrifically. And then eventually he calls his fucking flying car, comes out of the wave chat, they all fucking get in the car, and they, ba-boom, they, they fly off at this point. And everyone's like, wow, that was fucking nuts. So who the fuck are you, man? He's like, I'll tell you in a hot second. No, we want to know now. He's like, oh, you guys can just call me Coyote, and I'm the new leader of the pack. And Wolf is like, excuse me? Who the hell made you leader? Uh, I believe I just, and Dingo's like, listen, man, don't fucking mess with uh, uh, Coyote, okay? Um, I've been working with him. He knows what he's doing at this point. Let's just, let's just follow him and see what he has to say. And Wolf is just like, I don't give a shit. Plus, voiced by Clancy Brown, which is pretty cool. And I don't give a damn. I should be the leader now that Fox doesn't give a shit anymore. He's like, I'm going to fight you. And he fucking uh, goes and attacks Coyote. Now, Coyote, again, as we just saw, has like fucking super strength. He has microwave beams that literally melt your insides and turn your stomach into a microwave. It is fucking nightmare fuel. And this guy is just like, he fucking grabs him. He tries to push him. And he just fucking punches Wolf in the face. He goes, ah! And he flies back. He's like, you may have got, you may have got that one on me. But I'm going to get you this time. And he fucking runs out. And then he puts him in a big old bear hug. He's like, ah, how are you going to escape this? He's like, I'm just going to break your arms. What? Oh! Ah! He just breaks his arms. He's like, ah, my arms. And he fucking falls down. He doesn't break his arms, but he does break and loosen his grip. He gets him out of there. He's like, all right, fuck, Jesus Christ. Okay, you're in charge, in charge. Could you at least reveal who you are? He's like, I can do that. And he fucking takes his helmet off. And who's underneath that golden coyote helmet, chat? David Xanatos, chat. And they're like, what, David Xanatos? You were the, we, 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 we were trying to kill you. It's like, uh, yes. You were hired by Fox to kill me. That's true. But Fox is no longer your leader. And I want a new asset. And our true enemy, our true enemy is the gargoyles. And we must face them and defeat them together. It's the only way. And they go, well, yeah, they are the reason why we're here right now. So, all right. What's your plan, Dave? And he's like, boy, do I have a good one. And then shall we cut back to the clock tower above the police station? It is now nighttime. The night has fallen. The moon has risen. And the gargoyles, they break on open. They break from their um, their rocky forms, chat. And they're yawning. And they need to get going. They got a lot of uh, uh, shenanigans they want to complete tonight, chat. They got to eat some breakfast. And they're walking down the steps and everything. But little, good old Elisa Maz is right there. She's ready to talk to Goliath. And Goliath's like, hi, Elisa. How you doing tonight? I'm sorry, Goliath. We can't fucking flirt. We can't smooch until episode fucking uh, 75 of the series. Okay, then we can start smooching. But for right now, I have to tell you something. The pack has broken out of prison. And Lexington's like, what? They broke out of prison? We got to go after them now. As we know, chat, Lexington has a very personal uh, vendetta against the pack. They betrayed him. They tricked him. Uh, they betrayed his trust, and he has a lot of resentment towards them. So he's not always, he's like, he's intelligent, but he's not thinking clearly here, chat. And he's like, no, we got to beat them now. And like, we got to come up with a plan. He's like, I know where they'll go. They'll fucking go to, back to the studio where they used to film their dumb reality show. And Lisa Maz, he's like, Lex, 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 we already have officers being sent out there right now. They're covering it. And Brooklyn, he's like, uh, Lex, let me, let me go with you. 
Uh, we could scope this out ourselves, and we'll we'll be back later, guys. Okay? And Bronx is like, because Bronx is a fucking gargoyle dog. He can't talk. He's like, "Look over, Bronx." <laughs> All right, let's go. They fucking take Bronx, uh, Bronx in. They fly on out, and Goliath just fucking turns to Elisa and um, uh, Hudson and goes, "Yeah, they're definitely not going back to the studio." Like, yeah, we know, but let let him go. Let him go. We should stake out some other place. Matter of fact, we should go and talk to uh, David Zantos. Lisa says he's the one who created the pack. And Goliath's like, very good point, future wife. Uh, let's, Hudson, uh, fucking Broadway, let's go out and, and to the castle and confront David Zantos about this thing. Meanwhile, chat, we cut back to uh, Lexington and Brooklyn and Bronx, and they're, they're seeing the police. They're, they're investigating and perusing the uh, warehouse, but they're kind of on top of a ledge. And Lexington, he's just fucking on pins and needles. He's so anxious. He just wants to get down there. Brooklyn's like, Lex, you got to settle down, okay? It's like, let's let the police do their thing, and if we want to check it out, we can check it out. He's like, no, we got to go down there now. We can't let them escape. Like, he's not even thinking. He's like, listen, Lexington, you're letting your emotions cloud your judgment. I, I know where you are right now, okay? I, I know what you're thinking about. It's the same way when anyone brings up Damona and how she tricked me and how she tricked me into uh, betraying a Goliath that one time in episode, like, six, okay? I felt like a piece of shit for doing that, all right? And I don't want, I don't want that to happen to you. Luxton is like, ah, it's not the same. You don't know anything. He's like, all right, whatever. What do I fucking know? And eventually all the police leave. And Lexington's like, let's go down there. It's like, yeah, let's go down. There's not like we were just safe and secure up here. So they fly down to the studio chat. And there's nothing there. Uh, the, the pack are obviously not there. The police perused it. They're, they investigated it. And like Brooklyn's like, see, they're not here. And he goes, yeah, I guess you're right. All right, let's head back to let's head back to the clock tower. Let them know. But then, chat, did they hear this rumbling? You hear this rumbling all of a sudden. And this giant aircraft that we saw earlier just lands in the middle of the studio. It's, it's David Zantos' aircraft. And that fucking thing opens up. And what do we see in there, chat? It's fucking uh, the pack. It's the pack. They're all in there, chat. They're all decked out in their original uniforms and shit. Marketing, chat. TM, TM, TM. And then it's like, look, it's the pack. And then fucking uh, uh, Brooklyn, Lexington, and Bronx and the pack, they just start duking, chat. They start brawling and punching and wrestling. A lot of wrestling happening here right now. Yeah. It's nuts. Uh, and eventually, I mean, they get a few good uh, kicks and punches in uh, on the pack, though, Chad. Like, Brooklyn, he's definitely, other than probably um, Goliath, he's the, the strongest of the gargoyles. Like, Hudson, he was one of the strongest ones, but he's older now. But Brooklyn's like, oh, he's, he's like the up-and-coming gargoyle, okay? But eventually, it's just not enough. The the Especially when fucking uh, D David Zandos, Coyote, comes on the scene. Because, honestly, Brooklyn, Lexington, and Bronx are holding it down. They were defeating the pack. But when you get hit by fucking microwave beams and you have, like, a golden coyote statue with super strength, it's hard to beat that, chat. And they eventually get knocked out. They eventually get knocked out, and they're like, fuck. And, and they're like, all right, take them back to the boat. We're going to take them back to the boat to do experiments and also lead the other gargoyles into the trap. It's like, how are we get the gargoyles going to know that we took them? He's like, oh, don't worry. I have a man for the job. And then, Chad, we eventually cut back to uh, Goliath and Hudson in Broadway. They fly in the castle where they meet Alan Rickman, also known as Owen in this series. But good old Alan Rickman's like, hey, how you doing? Uh, he's not here. I know you're going to ask that. Uh, the pack have them on a ship out in the Hudson, or I guess somewhere, I guess, no, it's not in the Hudson, it's right off, right off the coast of the Atlantic, so just fucking go for it, and it's like, god damn it, I, will you tell David I'm gonna come back here, and I'm gonna have words, he goes, noted, <laughs> he fucking flies off, and then, you know, Alan Rickman goes, yeah, he's coming your way, just wanna let you know, click, and eventually, chat, uh, we're back on the boat, and we see Bronx and Lexington and Brooklyn. They're like, why do we always end up in these situations together? It's fucking nuts. This first happened with Macbeth and up in season one. Now it's happening here again. What the hell are we going to do? And, this, you know, at this point, like, Lexington, he's just frustrated. He's like, God, ah, Brooklyn, you were absolutely right about this whole situation. I'm sorry. My, my, got, my, my, my lust for vengeance got to my head. And he's like, don't worry about it. Well... And they're, they're smart, yet because this is a metallic structure, and so it'll cause, like, a lot of vibrations and echoes. So, I mean, eventually, you would imagine this is a trap that they're laying for Goliath and all the rest of our friends and family. So let's just start baiting on shit so that they can hear us. And, and, and gargoyle hearing is very sensitive, Chad. They can sense vibrations in the earth, so they'll pick them up. And so eventually we cut uh, up, and so they're baiting all this shit. And eventually we cut up back to the uh, outside of the ship where the entire pack and, and David Santos is waiting for him. And they're like, are you sure they're coming? You sure they're coming? No, they'll be here. Don't worry. Like, they'll probably know it's a trap. And he's like, that's what I want them to think. And eventually, Chet, they see in the distance uh, Goliath and Hudson flying. And they're like, there he is. Start shooting. And they come. But the thing is, though, Goliath and Hudson, they stay back. So they miss. And then fucking Broadway comes in there. Big boy, thick Broadway, Chet. Th three C's thick. 
flies down there, and he just he just lays them all out. She just uses his mask, uses that Broadway mask to hit them all, and then eventually. They all start duking out. They start fighting everything. Uh, and uh, they also, they, they start to hear, like, the, the vibrations and, and the screaming. Like, oh, shit, they're underneath here. And fucking Broadway or Goliath, like, rips open this little um, top to this boat. And thank God they, they, they go in there and they grab Brooklyn, Lexington, and Bronx. And everyone starts fighting at this point. And uh, eventually, uh, Goliath, he squares off with uh, the Golden Coyote chat. They start duking it out, start punching. But Goliath has the advantage at this point. He's, he's, just, he's just stronger. He's faster. But Coyote's putting up a good, uh, a good fight. Though eventually, he fucking, Goliath pins him to the wall, grabs his head, rips his head off. But it's just the mass chat. He's like, fucking David Santos. He says, hello, Goliath. Good to see you. And they just start fucking duking it even more, chat. And eventually the pack's like, this is this situation is not going well. I mean, we, we're still going to keep fighting, but we got to have another game plan here. And while uh, Goliath and David are fighting, uh, 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 this is where the, remember the microwave beam, Shad? This is the one time they didn't actually work. He tries to fire a microwave beam at Goliath, and Goliath just goes, uh, uh, this misses, and it goes right over his shoulder, Shad, and he hits like one of those explosive gas canisters on the ship. And ba-boom! The whole ship is going up, Chat. Everything's on fucking fire. And this pack, at this point, the pack's like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. So they all start heading to the, um, uh, the, uh, like the, uh, the, the escape vessel, the, the flying machine, the, the, the fucking, I don't know, I don't know, the, the hovercraft that David Zantos has. And they're all heading that way. The, some of the, the gargoyles are cutting them off. And I think at one point, uh, yes, it's Hudson. Hudson, he has, he has a fucking sword out. They all surround him. He's like, all right, let's fucking go. And he holds them all back, Chad, every single one. And when Hyena is about, she has like this this metallic arm that she puts on, like the sleeve or whatever with this hand. And she's just about to slice into Hudson. And he fucking turns around, Chad, and cuts all of her fingers off. And she goes, Aah! and cuts her fingers like, oh, that's going to be a wound. You remember there, lass. And she's just fucking screaming and bleeding at this point. She's going, oh, God. Um, and eventually, uh, the more explosions start going off, and Goliath and David Zandos, they're, they're, they're uh, blasted back, chat. And then Bronx jumps on top of David Zaratos' chat and begins eating his face. I'm not joking here. I am not, this is not like a, uh, an exaggeration. Bronx starts eating David, like starts chewing and mauling his face. And it's like, even Goliath's like, oh, it was, oh, it was, it was, uh, it was her brother? It was her brother then, Shannon. It was, you know what? You're right. It wasn't, it wasn't a hyena. It was, it was Jackal that got his fingers cut off. Excuse me. Wrong sibling. Jackal's going, oh my God, my baby. My baby. He's, he's the one who's screaming his ass off right now. Um, but Bronx is fucking eating the face of David. Even Goliath's just like, wow, <laughs> holy shit. And then, but David Zanos, he manages to, uh, to uh, pull, uh, uh, push uh, Bronx off him. He's like, oh, <gasps> And he, like, moves his hand from his face, chat, and he's a robot. He's a, he's a Terminator. It's a Terminator. And he's, like, foremost target identified. And fucking Goliath's like, what the fuck? And like, I don't like this shit. And fucking uh, David Zanos' robot starts running at Goliath. Goliath's like, yeah, fuck this. And he fucking whacks him so goddamn hard that his head just comes right off, chat. And it lands on the feet, it lands on the feet chat of Hyena, and she goes, oh, he was a robot? Well, that just means it'll be so much better. Now, chat, it's like, what did she mean by that? Because throughout the episode, she's making references that like, oh, oh man, David Santos is kind of cute. I, I dig him. I like this coyote. It's like, all oh, the things you can do with all those toys. And the thing is, chat, she's implying that the fact that He's a robot. I think it's a very subtle reference to like her thinking that she can, you know, uh, uh, stimulate her like a vibrator. It's the robo dick, exactly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to beat around the bush here, Chad. She's like, oh, that, that it's, I mean, it's even better because he's like a, he's like a robot vibrator. That's what it is. I'm like, what? the stuff they got away in this series, Chad, is amazing. It's so fucking subtle. You're like. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know what you're doing here. And so she's like, well, it's a vibrator. But eventually, the, the ship starts going down, and she grabs her brother, who's like, my fucking hand. And they get in the emergency shuttle, and they're blasting off, chat. And the thing is, Lexington, he's just about to, he has a rocket launcher. He's like a laser rocket, just about to blast the pack out of the sky. Kill them all for good. And um, the thing is, though, Brooklyn, he got kind of fucked up in the fight. He got blasted, and he's about to fall off the boat. And so Lexington's like, oh, there he is, but there's them. Oh, oh. And he's like, fuck. 
He throws the gun away, Chad, and he grabs his, grabs his brother, pulls him up, makes sure he's okay. All right, we got to get the hell out of here. They all fly off, Chad. They all fly off, and the ship uh, 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 sinks to the bottom of the ocean with the David Xanatos head. The vibrator also has met its demise, Chad. The Robo Viper has met its demise. And eventually, they all fly back to the castle. Yeah, you know, fuck, they're all like, geez, that was crazy. And Brooklyn goes over to Lexi and is like, hey, thanks for saving my bacon. He actually uses that line. He's like, you know, no, no, listen, uh, you, thank you for earlier. You you made me realize what's really important. It's not Ravenga. It's it's friends and it's family. And they all fucking hug Chad. It's adorable. And Elisa's there and she's hugging. It's great. It's great. But then we cut back. We cut back to the prison. We cut back to Rikers. And it's the parole hearing for Fox. And the, uh, the, the judges and everyone who's there is like, well, based on your good behavior and the fact that you saved that guard and you protected her, um, we are granting you early parole. It's like, make the best of it that you can, Miss Fox. She goes, I will, Your Honor. And she fuck, she's walking out. She's strutting out of that prison chat, and she has a limo waiting for her. And that limo door opens, and she seats herself in it, chat. She unravels her hair from the 20 pairs. just these luscious red locks, chat. And who's sitting that right next to her, chat? David fucking Xanatos. And she goes... Hi, lover. And they start smooching and ha- start having hot, sweaty car sex chat. It's a lot going on this episode. And the plan's revealed. This is what it was all about, chat. It wasn't to get the, the, the revenge in the Gar Girls. This is what it was. And she starts, you know what? David, you were so brilliant to stage a prison break, uh, you know, getting the pack out of there. Also, you can have it be where I look like the hero so I can get early parole. I'm just so sorry that you couldn't defeat them in hindsight, your, your robot. And he goes, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. It's like, yeah, they destroyed one of my uh, one of my hundreds of ships that are in my company. Yeah, they destroyed my robot. One I was just testing out. It's like, clearly I have to make some uh, adjustments to it. But you know what's fucking worth more than goddamn money, my dear? And she goes, what? Hot, sweaty car sex. And they start going at it, chat. That's what Elliot Hobb. <laughs> okay, I got I to gotta run, guys, for the night. You guys have a good one. Great review, Chris. Thank you, Elliot. <laughs> and they start, you know what he says, chat? A true love, that's worth more than anything. It's like, aw, look at that. Even David Zantos loves someone, chat. And him and Fox start smooching, chat. And that's the end of the episode. Gargirls, episode 14. Episode 1 of season 2, chat. Leader of the pack. And goddamn right it was David Zantos. Didn't even have to be leader to pull uh, shenanigans on both the, uh, the pack and the gargoyles. So that, was a very, that was a fun episode, chat. Really establishes what a badass villain David Xantos is. But now, my friends, now, after all those reviews, hope you enjoyed them, Chad. Hope you enjoyed the vivid descriptions of microwave beams inside your stomach and those becoming microwaves. We can get to some gameplay. 